Fall's upon us and you know what time it is when it's fall. There's allocated bourbon, sure, you got your birthday bourbons, your BTAC, all that stuff, but when it gets really cold, toward the end of Thanksgiving night, Christmas Eve, and you're packing presents, there's one bottle that comes to mind, one that you wanna to reach to every year, a Midwinter Night's Dream by High West. This is the 10th year that High West has been coming out with their pretty limited and highly in demand product, a Midwinter Night's Dram, uh, which has been a blend of different rye whiskeys that they have finished in some type of port wine barrels. Last year, it was Act 9, the ninth year. It was their Rendezvous Rye that was finished in tawny and ruby port casks. This year, we don't get quite as much specificity. Midwinter Night's Dram, blend of straight rye whiskeys finished in port barrels, followed by High West in Park City, Utah. It doesn't say where this is distilled. You know, I always wonder, you know, don't these whiskeys have to say where they were distilled if it wasn't distilled in the place that's identified on the bottle? And since it just says bottled in Utah, we know it probably wasn't actually distilled by High West. High West has been distilling some of their own stuff um, for the past few years. But my understanding is they've slowly been introducing that into their main product line and even now, um, either Rendezvous Rye has either recently transitioned over to being fully made of their distillate or it's now mostly their distillate still with some other source stuff. And I wanted to know where this stuff was from, but it doesn't tell us. It just says it's bottled in Utah, and that's when I realized. This isn't a straight rye whiskey, it's a blend of straight rye whiskeys. And because they're not calling this a straight whiskey, they don't have to disclose where it's from. They're just saying it's a blend of different straight rye whiskeys. Mystery solved in that regard. Sort of. <laughs> we know they didn't distill it, but we don't know who did, officially. Every High West Midwinter Night's Dram is 47.8% ABV, which puts it at 98.6. You know, the average temperature is calculated back in, you know, the 1800s or whatever. A little cutesy. A Midwinter Night's Dram on the nose. That's richer than I was expecting for under 100 proof. Looks like some clove or nutmeg there. Oh, and there's the port. There's the finish. Uh, it's just this intense sweetness, um, like uh, like dates almost. Dates with nutmeg or clove or something sprinkled on them. Oh, great nose. Uh, I didn't expect baking spice on something like this, but that was a, it works pretty well. All right, let's give it a taste. That's really good. So it's all baking spice rye on the front palate and then you get the port kind of take over in the mid to the back palate. You get like a, a sour note, but not, not sour in that it's tart really in, in any way, just sour in the way that um, if you're eating grapes versus chocolate, you know, the grapes are gonna be a little bit more sour, have some tartness to them like in comparison. And then you just get that, that wine finish that kicks in that that sweet, like I was saying, not quite as sweet as on the nose. I wouldn't go as far as saying like a date, more like a just right plum, maybe a, a little bit of those flavors. And then the finish is back to the rye, where you're getting more of those green notes, um, not quite as intense as like a 95.5 rye from MGP, but more in that direction um, than in the baking spice direction, which is really interesting since there was all those that baking spice on the front palate. The first time I, I tried this, because I did open the bottle before, I couldn't wait, couldn't resist. Um, I kept thinking it was really good, but it was a little bit light. Like I wish it was richer, which wish it was heavier. But now I'm having it, and both on the nose and in the palate, the richness is actually standing out to me. I'm more impressed with the viscosity of it now than I was when I initially tried it. On that second sip, the same notes were there, but they developed a little bit differently. I wasn't hit with all the baking spice up front. It was more that port, that port sweetness, that plumminess with that, that tart note again. And then it was as it got to the mid palate that I got more of that baking spice and kind of those green notes from rye hitting, hitting it once. And I'm left with a blend of them on the finish that's still going, which is pretty good for a sub 100 proof American whiskey. I'm gonna give this a grade early only because there's more to come in this video. I do wanna compare it to last year's Midwinter Night's Dram, but I don't wanna be biased. So the whiskey in the bottle, how good is this liquid that we're drinking? It tastes delicious, it's complex. There's nothing really bad about it. Eating that tart note, it works really well with the rest of what's going on. And I like that, that it's changing, uh, how it develops over the palate to keep it you know, interesting. So it's something to think about, something to enjoy. I would give this whiskey an 8.5.
it's great. If you find a bottle for a decent price that isn't gonna leave you bankrupt or you know shell-shocked or with your wife crazy mad at you, then go for it. But that brings us to the grade. Taking everything into account, how hard it is to find and the price, those are tough because this is very, very hard to find. I know where I am, it hit every store in the same week. And so it was like a mad dash and then it was gone. And it's expensive. They increased the price actually. MSRP on this one is around 150. Is it worth it? The overall grade I'm going to give this based on time I put in trying to find this thing and then the money I spent trying to buy it versus how good it is. I'm gonna give this one a B. If it was cheaper, the grade would be higher. There are a lot of allocated bourbons out there that on the secondary market, they shoot up to you know well over two or 300, but their MSRP, if you're lucky to find a place, if you're really gonna hunt for them and you could find it somewhere, you're paying closer to around 100 for a lot of those. And this one's different. This is, you know, 135 to 170 is what I've seen SRP if you could even find it. So I, I think the price hurts it a little bit, even though it's really, really good stuff. But because it's so hard to find, because it's so expensive, I, I think a B is the appropriate grade for this stuff. On to the comparison. Let's see how this stacks up against last year's. We've got Act 9 right here, last year's. Full disclosure, I really, really liked last year's. Let's get some quick notes on it and then compare. Okay, a little more rye forward um, with more classic rye notes, not really the baking spice, more airing on that fresh side of things for this one. A little piney, uh, still not really getting uh, a whole lot of the port on the nose of this one, unless it is just softening some of those rye notes and I can't tell. Great nose, pretty different than Act 10 though, this year's. All right, let's taste it. On the palate, Act 9, last year's Midwinter Night's Dram, is much less rye forward and the port to me is really the star of the show there's not really that tartness there it's almost like a drier influence actually than the uh the newer one and it's not a bad thing i mean that's i really like it and i don't get any baking spice at all like i do with the act 10. it's really that fresh almost minty definitely piney note but i mean that that's really initially on the palate and then aside from that it's that it's that port it's that sweetness back to 10 this year's yeah, more of that baking spice. I think that's really what distinguishes it, is, um, well, two things, really. Act nine from last year is more port forward on the palate, and you're not gonna get baking spices, you're gonna get some of those green rye notes. And the act 10 from this year, so much more baking spice on the nose and on the palate for me, and the port isn't as forward. Um, the rye sticks around, uh, and you're, you're getting a lot more of those notes uh, across the palate, you know, front to back, anywhere from last year, where the, the port is really um, doing a lot of that work. These are a lot more different than I was expecting them to be. This is a bit of a shocker for me, kind of a cool one. But these are tough to find. I think most folks watching probably aren't gonna be able to find a Midwinter Night's Dram. I didn't think I'd be able to get one this year. I'm sure they'll be even harder to find next year because that's just the way things are going. What I would recommend to you is to try different types of Port finished rise. Port finished bourbons are good. Port finished scotches are good. Port finished ryes are different. It, they're kind of their own animal. And if you have a craft distiller near you that's lucky enough, successful enough to be able to get um, barrel finishes on some of their whiskey, give them a try. Um, certainly, if you get a port finished rye, absolutely give that a try. I believe Starlight's had uh, a port finished rye from time to time, time to time. Woodenville Whiskey Company. They just had a harvest release in distillery where they had their own port finished rye. It was fantastic. I would encourage all of you to do your best to try to find port finished rye wherever you can, just to give it a try, see how it affects it, see if you like that sort of effect on the rye if you can't find this stuff. Even though MSRP has gone up, I do think it is worth the MSRP um, if you find it for that. I don't know that I pay over 200 for, for this bottle. It's really good, but it's really tough for me to pull the trigger on 200 bucks on any American whiskey, honestly. But that's just me. I'm really a fan of this stuff. I hope you like it too if you're able to find it. If you were, I wanna hear what you think. If you've been able to compare Act 9 to Act 10, how do you think they compare? How do you think they measure up? Is one better than the other? You get totally different notes than I do. Let me know, like, comment, subscribe. Helps me out a lot, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you've gotten a really good pork finish rye that maybe a lot of folks haven't heard of, uh, let us know. Let us know where we can go so we can, you know, scratch the itch once all this stuff's gone, or if we can't find it. Until next time, cheers.